Oh, why? Hello, grade seven. I know it's been a very long time since we've done one of these, but here's another video. And in today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at discounts and markups. So let's just jump into our first example. In this first example, we're going to figure out what the sale price is, which you've already done in that activity that we'd covered the other day. So we know that when we're finding a sale price, that means we must have gotten a discount because it went on sale. And so if we take a look at our first example, we have a video game that is going to originally cost $35 and we want to know what the sale price is. If we look at the picture, it is 25% off. So just like before, we can visualize this problem by using a bar um, to represent the original cost of the video game. So if the original cost of our video game is $35 and we have a 25% off, then we know that we can divide this bar up into, that's right, four different parts. Because 25%, hopefully we now have memorized um, that it is equal to one quarter. So now that we have this broken up into different parts, we can figure out how much each part is. $35 divided by four gives us $8.75, which tells us that each section is going to be $8.75. And because we have a discount of 25% off, that means one of these sections is going to be our discount, and then our sale price is going to be the remaining section that we have in our model. And then looking at our sale price part of the model, we could do $35, take away $8.75 to figure out our sale price, um, or we could do $8.75 times three to figure out our sales price. And our sale price in this case is gonna be $26.25. And now while a model is great, and it's great to visualize math, sometimes the percentages of the discounts might not be such a nice number. So like what if we had 17% or what if we had five and a half percent? It gets a little bit more difficult, right? So how can we create some kind of formula like we did before? Well, if we notice, this is very similar to what we did with finding the percentage of an amount. So in this case, if we're looking at our diagram, if the total, the original amount was 35%, well, what are we looking for as the part? Well, our part is going to be that 75% amount because we're taking it away from the, um, the original and then the discount. So the 100% take away that our discount gives us that 75%. So if we write this kind of in a formula, what we have is our sales price is equal to the original amount multiplied by, well, we have 100% take away our discount. And then in this case, we're gonna have 35 times 100% take away the 25%, which is our discount, which gives us 35 times 75%. And just like before, we can't multiply percentages. We have to convert this percent to a decimal or a fraction. So we have 35 times 0 0.75, which gives us the exact same amount, $26.25. So let's take a look at your first try question for this video. You're gonna find the original price on a skateboard that is $50, and the skateboard is on sale for 20% off. So what is the sale price? So here in our second example, we're trying to find the original price. So it says, what is the original price of these cleats? So we can see in the picture that they are 40% off, and now the price is $33. So just like before, we can represent this problem visually in a bar model. So the whole entire bar would represent the original price that we currently don't know. But we do know that they were 40% off. So when we think about 40% off into different parts, hopefully we recognize that 40% is also equal to the fraction 2 over 5, which gives us a hint that we can create separate parts for our bar diagram, and we're going to create five different parts for this one. And our discount is 40% off, which is also equal to two-fifths. So here, this section here is our discount. Now, after our discount, our cleats are $33. So that means this white remaining part is equal to $33, just this part. So if this section here is equal to $33, well, then we have 33 that's going to be divided into those three bars. And 33 divided by 3 gives us 11. So we know that each of those sections now in the entire diagram 
is 11, all of them each, which means that the price originally would be 11 times 5, which gives us 55. So just like the last question, we can actually do this question just like we did in the other weeks when we we're finding the part, the whole, and the percentage. So our part, which really our part for this one is the sale price, is going to be equaled to the whole times the percent, and our whole is just the original cost. So in the question, we're given the part, and the part is $33. So $33 is equal to um, the original price we don't know, so we could use a variable, we could use W, times the percentage. Now the question gives you 40%. But 33 isn't equal to 40%. $33 is equal to, if we look in our diagram, there's three parts here, which represents 60%. So we have $33 is equal to W times 60%. And of course, we can't do anything with that 60% because it is a percentage. So we can convert this into a decimal or a fraction. So we have 33 is equal to W times 0.6, and if we want to solve for W, we're gonna have to divide both sides by our 0.6, and then we get the whole, which W then gives us 55, and again, different strategy, same answer. And taking a look at our second try question, the discount of a DVD is 50%. It is on sale for $10, so what is the original price of the DVD? So taking a look at our third example, a store pays $70 for a bicycle, and what is the selling price when the markup is 20%? So if we think about in a real life situation, let's say you here in Maracaibo, you bought a bicycle in the United States for $70, but it takes money for you to get the bicycle here, you're shipping it over, so obviously you'd like to make a little bit of a profit. In order to do that, you mark up the price of the bicycle and you mark it up by a certain percentage. So in this case, you're marking up the bicycle up 20% from the original cost that it was before. So again, we can use a bar diagram to represent this problem. So this bar is going to represent our bicycle. So here I'm going to use a bracket to represent the bicycle and this bicycle is going to be marked up 20%. So that 20% gives me a hint onto how many different parts I should try to split up this bar. And 20% can be written as a fraction as one over five, which tells me that I can make this bar into five different parts. So now this is going to represent the original cost, which is $70. And then what's going to happen is I'm gonna mark this up by 20%. So that means I need to add on an additional bar. So here is my additional bar, and we can fill it up with a different color. So this is the mark up. Now, if we know that the bicycle was originally $70, then we can figure out how much in our original rectangle each section is. So we can do 70 divided by 5, which gives us 14, which means that all of the parts have 14. And we can see that the additional 20% is $14. So in total, our bicycle is going to be $70, which was originally, plus the $14, which gives us an $84 for our selling price of this bicycle. So again, just like all of the different examples we looked in in this video, this can be related back to the other lessons that we did about the part, the whole, and the percentage. So in our case, again, we have the part is equal to the whole times the percentage. Now our part is actually our selling price, and we don't know this one, so our selling price is still going to be equal to our whole, the whole of the original, which is our bicycle, which was $70, and multiply by the percentage. It's being marked up. 20%. So that means we have the original 100% plus 20%, which gives us 120%. So now we have our variable, and we can use P, is equal to 70 times 120%. And of course, again, we can't have a percentage, so we're going to change this to a decimal. So P is equal to 70 times 1.2, and we get 
P is equal to 84. And again, we can double check our work. If it's going to be more, if it's going to be more than 100%, then it has to be more than the original price that we had at the beginning. All right, so here is your last try question for this video. It says a store sells USB flash drives for $25 each, and the markup for each USB flash drive is 25%. So how much did the store pay for 50 memory cards?